Good morning, everyone. We are so thankful that we can still worship the Lord in spite of uh, some of the things that we didn't expect. Some of us are not feeling well. So for others to uh, stay safe, uh, they would rather stay in their houses and do online worship. Nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon because last night I was thinking that I would not be able to speak today. So I was, my mind was raising uh, like, ano bang gagawin natin tomorrow? Uh, there were some suggestion like they sabi niya, we can do other things like a year or a year and a half ago, those videos. But sabi ko okay lang. Um, I thank the Lord for, uh, because of my prayer, he answered, Lord, just give me um, energy to preach as long na hindi lang sasakit ang ulo ko. Uh, it'll be okay. So, um, when I was thinking about it, uh, naka, ano ko na, the, the, the message we're going to have today is about the illusion of control. Well, for me, it is committing myself to the Lord for Him to control as I preach uh, the word today. Well, sabi ng iba, others said that control, uh, wanting control is an illusion. That's why this is a thing that others like leaders, world leaders, or anybody that would like to have control, but actually it is an illusion. One pastor said when, I, when we attended the, the conference, sabi niya, uh, control, taking control is an illusion. Because if we look at the big picture, we cannot have this ultimate control. The Lord God still has the ultimate control. Maybe for a time, temporarily, we can. But ultimately, God is still in control. The passage today we have is Exodus chapter 8, 20 up to 32. For us, we're familiar with the plagues that God sent to Egypt, especially to Pharaoh. Chapter 8, 7, 8, and I think 9 are chapters that talk about the plague that the Lord sent to Pharaoh and Egypt. Today we're going to have the fourth plague, but Pumasok tayo dun sa fourth plague. And since they have ten, we're going to leave the rest muna. When I was looking at the plagues, try to research the plagues that God brought to Egypt, isa-isa pala ng plagues are a target to the gods of the Egyptians. Isa-isa. Like, the gnat, G-N-A-T. Uh, sometimes they think it's mosquito or meron ding lice. Today we're going to have flies. And then water turned to blood. And then also the killing of the herds or the animals. Yun ang mga plague. It is a target. Every plague is a target to an Egyptian god. Magpapakilala ang Panginoon. He's going to introduce himself. And the last God that God was targeting, you know who? Was Pharaoh. Because Pharaoh was considered as a God in Egypt during the time. He was even considered as the personification of their God, Ra or Re. So we know that the last plague was the killing of the firstborn son in Egypt. Those who don't have blood on their doorpost, the firstborn in that family or in that household will die. So the last plague was a target 
uh, or Pharaoh was the target. Now, we're going to read. Medyo, we have 12 verses today, but I tried to put this in our screen. Okay? So, Exodus chapter 8, 20 up to 32. Okay, let's read verse 20. Then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning and confront Pharaoh as he goes to the river and say to him, This is what the Lord says. Let my people go so that they may worship me. If you do not let my people go, I will send swarms of flies on you and your officials, on your people, and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians will be full of flies. Even the ground will be covered with them. Next. But on that day, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen where my people live. No swarms of flies will be there. So that you will know that I, the Lord, am in this land. I will make a distinction between my people and your people. This sign will occur tomorrow. And the Lord did this. Then swarms of flies poured into Pharaoh's palace and into the houses of his officials. Throughout Egypt, the land was ruined by the flies. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice to your God here in the land. But Moses said, That would not be right. The sacrifices we offer the Lord our God would be detestable to the Egyptians. And if we offer sacrifices that are detestable in their eyes, will they not stone us? We must take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God as he commands us. But Pharaoh said, I will let you go to offer sacrifices to, your Lord, to, to the Lord your God in the wilderness, but you, mana, you must not go very far. Now pray for me. Moses answered, As soon as I leave you, I will pray to the Lord. And tomorrow the flies will leave Pharaoh and his officials and his people. Only let Pharaoh be sure that he does not act deceitfully again by not letting the people go to offer sacrifices to the Lord. 30 up to 32. Then Moses left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord did what Moses asked. The flies left Pharaoh and his officials, and his people. Not a fly remained. But this time, also, Pharaoh hardened his heart and would not let the people go. Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful time. We pray that you will fill us with the Holy Spirit in this place as we ponder upon your word. Dear Heavenly Father, May we use the lens of the scripture to look at our lives through this lesson as you talk to us through your word, through the Holy Spirit. Be with us, Lord. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. As I've said, this is the fourth plague. As we read, <clears throat> as we read, look at verse 32. But this time also, Pharaoh hardened his heart and would not let the people go. This is the fourth time that Pharaoh tricked the Lord. He tried to trick the Lord, <coughs> excuse me, in saying, okay, you can go, but Moses prayed to God first that he's going to take all these flies or these lies, or these frogs, or this. Okay, whenever God would take all those plagues, and then the Bible says, Pharaoh 
would continue to harden his heart. He would not let the people of God go. Now, look at the verses. Kasi maraming verses. We have 12 verses today. We're going to look at it in study and look at what God would tell us today. Now, in this previous or in this chapter, there is one thing that the Lord wanted and what the Lord wants. What does the Lord want? In verse 20, it is very, very clear that the Lord expressed what He wanted for His people. He said, let my people go. What is the reason? So that they may worship me. You know how many years the Israelites stayed in Egypt? More than 400 years. And for more than 400 years, the people of the Lord in Israel was not able to worship truly to Jehovah. We have mentioned, or the verse, the verse mentioned, that Moses knew that if they are going to worship inside Egypt, it would be a detestable thing to the Egyptians. Why? Because the people of God worship him. The people of Egypt worship other gods. So the Egyptians don't want other people to worship other god in their land. So can you imagine? If we look at the life or the yeah, the life of the nation of Israel for the whole year, they have a lot of activities. They have a lot of feasts. And those feasts were designed to worship God. And for more than 400 years in that land, they cannot worship God. So, at this time, God said, let my people go so that they may worship me. Even ang Panginoon, no, nakakita, that His people cannot truly worship Him the way they worship Him when they were in their country. Now, letting go of the people of God so that they can worship Him is the idea behind all these plagues. Sabi no? Ang Panginoon. A lot of people are asking, why did God give ten plagues? He could have given them one plague, which is very, very strong or fatal. But God gave ten. So why did God did not annihilate Egypt, so that his people can go out. Those are the questions that come into our mind or even others the question that. But, you know, God has a purpose why he gave these ten plagues. One of those we mentioned kanina. That he was targeting the gods that the Egyptians worship. God was telling the Egyptians that your God cannot compete with me. And your gods doesn't have the control of this world. I do. I do. Okay. Now, what else? What will happen if Pharaoh refuses? Okay? Diba? What does the Lord want? He wanted his people to go out so that they can worship him. The next question, what will happen if Pharaoh refuses? Well, as I've said, this is already plague number four. What will happen to Pharaoh if he is going to refuse is the same thing that will happen by the previous plagues which he did refuse. Ano mangyari? God will send another plague. And this time, it will be flies. Look at verse 21. I will send swarms of flies upon you and upon your officials and your people 
and your houses. Well, you know, some of us, ang mga bahay natin, some of our houses are merong screen to prevent the mosquitoes and flies and other insects to go inside our house. Diba? Nung una, when uh, we were still small, yung ginagamit sa bahay is mosquito net. Okay? But not the whole house na may screen. Ngayon, uso na. Almost all houses meron na mga screens. It's to protect our house from flies and mosquitoes. Now, can you imagine the palace of Egypt? Na napuno ng flies. Swarms of flies. Everywhere flies. You've been, to a, rest, you've been in a restaurant? Na kumakain ka. You're so busy. <laughs> You're so busy <laughs> trying to... <laughs> hindi ka na makakain kasi ang dami-daming mga... And then in a little while, your drinks meron ng flies. Your food may patay. Yung sabaw mo may patay. Can you imagine that? Kuchaw and then having all these flies. And then, have you tried to sleep somewhere and then puno-puno ng flies that will just land on your face, on your feet, and everywhere? Grabe, no? Hindi ka... I don't know if you teach in school, if you cook food, if you rest, if you do your chores, at saka opisina ka, puno ng flies. Ito, upon you, your officials, your people, and your houses. You know what, when I think about this, mayroon palang isang, there's one, uh, one God the Egyptian have that they worship him na meron silang depiction na isang human body but the head of a fly. That's one of their gods. One of their gods. Before this, the magicians of Pharaoh tried to emulate what Moses and Aaron did. You know why I took this fourth plague? Because this time, the magicians of Pharaoh are not or cannot be seen anymore, neither Aaron and Moses. First, second, and third, I think, there was Moses there and there was the magicians of Pharaoh. But now, wala na. What does it mean? It means that God is the one dealing with Pharaoh directly. Despite the, the succession of plagues brought about by God to Egypt and later on to the family of Pharaoh, Pharaoh's heart remained hard. His heart remained hard. He was not touched by water turned into blood. He was not by frogs. You know ang frogs? Frogs did, did not just leave the palace. Some of the frogs died there. We're talking about tons of frogs. Can you imagine the smell, the whole palace in the whole nation? So it, for, for a week and many, many days, it stayed there. But the Bible says, Pharaoh's heart remained hard <clears throat> in spite of this. You know, when we look at this, every plague was a warning shot to Pharaoh. You know, warning shot? When we look at the, the announcement, no trespassing, trespassers will be shot. <laughs> private property. So if someone sees you passing through that private par property, they will fire a warning shot. It's a warning for you to get out of that place or leave that place. A warning shot. A mga police, ganun din. If a thief will go or a criminal will run, they're allowed to fire a warning shot. Meaning, warning. Baka ang next na putok will be unyo na. Each plague was a warning shot to Pharaoh. What warning shot? Pharaoh, your heart continues to be hard. Stop it. 
you stop it. Or it will get worse. Okay? But you know what? <clears throat> Although Pharaoh received a lot of warning shot from the plagues, he did not budge. You know what? He even tried to trick the Lord. You know, si Pharaoh talaga walang alam. Hindi niya kilala. He doesn't know Jehovah. That's why he tried to trick God. Well, what can you imagine from a man who doesn't know God? Right? Take a look at other people. Those people who don't know God. They attempt and they even make many times to trick God. You know what? Not only people outside do trick God into believing. Some Christians in the church try this thing also to trick God. You want to get an example? Now, there are those Christians who are sick in the hospital. And sometimes you would say, Lord, kung gugaling lang ako, hmm, babalik na ako sa church, magsiserve na ako sa church, I'm going to serve in the church, Lord, pag gumaling ako, Lord, please heal, heal me. Uh, di ba? Lord, sana kung ang bata ko makapasa in, their ex in our exam, every Sunday mag-church na ako, Lord. Lord, if you're going to bless my business, I'm going to give my tight. Okay, the Lord bless the business. The Lord gave the, the child, they were able to pass the exam, and the Lord healed those who are sick. But after that, wala. Trying to trick God. God was tricked. And then other people said, I thought God was an all-knowing God. Ay, bakit siya na-trick? Who tricked him? Not only people on the outside who doesn't know him, even the people inside the church trick God. Just like Pharaoh. So what does people of God inside the church and Pharaoh have in common? Sometimes, it's just if the people inside the church don't have any idea who God is. They don't fear God. They just consider God as someone just like them. So ganito. But you know what? God dealt with Pharaoh. God let him know that God is not just like another God of the Jews or any other God but the almighty and powerful God. We can see that. We can see that in the next plagues. Now, speaking about Pharaoh having a hard heart, let's take a look at this hard heart. Now, what are the causes of having a hard heart? Ano ba ang cause or causes of having a hard heart? Now, the first one is this one, sin. It will definitely make our hearts hard. Okay? Sin causes our hearts to grow hard. Especially continual and unrepentant sin. It will cause our heart to get hard. Okay? If we don't confess our sins, they have an increasing and numbing effect on the conscience. Kasi masasanay ka na eh, no? You get used to it that you think that it's okay. It has a numbing effect on the heart. And the heart gets harder and harder. Making it difficult to even distinguish from right and from wrong. You know, the Apostle Paul was able to mention that kind of heart when he called that a seared conscience. Now, what is a seared conscience? Now, 1 Timothy 4, 1 up to 2 says, Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. These people are hypocrites and liars, and their consciences are dead. The same word, 
seared conscience or dead conscience. That's the same thing. Sin, later on, will cause our hearts to get hard and our consciences dead. Hindi na malaman what is right and what is wrong. Another word for that is a callous heart, unsensitive heart. Like we become unsensitive to the feelings of others. Others are, you know, when we, others are, hindi, hindi maganda, they're, 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 anong tawag nito? Others are just so down or depressed, but others don't, okay lang. They, 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 they don't notice or they don't know what others need, kung ano ang kailangan ng iba, or kung ano mga bagay na ginagawa ng iba na masama, or hindi, it's just, wala. Wala. Now, as what the Apostle Paul said, that in the last days, there will be people who are hypocrites and liars, and their consciences are dead. Now, what does it mean? It means, applying to ourselves, if we relentlessly continue to engage in sin, there will come a time when God will give us over to our debased mind and let us have it our way. The same thing happened to Pharaoh. You know what happened to Pharaoh? Pharaoh hardened his heart. Not only that, God also caused his heart to harden. Si Pharaoh gumawa, made something to harden his heart. And God also did harden his heart. Can you imagine? This is what the Apostle Paul said. Time will come that if you continue to harden your heart, God will give you up later on. Papabayaan ka ng Panginoon. Okay, yan, that's what you like. Okay, then you get it. Then you get it. Pharaoh hardened his heart. And God helped him to harden his heart the more. Let me know. What else? Sin? Another thing. Pride. Two, sin and pride. These are the things that will cause us, our hearts, to harden. Now, pride will also cause our hearts to harden. You know, one time, God was able to mention His judgments upon the nation of Edom. You know what the nation of Edom is? Edom comes from the tribe of Esau. Si Esau, kapatid ni Jacob. Esau is Edom, the Edomites. Jacob, Israel, right? Both of them are brothers, right? Si Pilate in the New Testament belongs to the tribe, the last tribe of Edom. That's why Edom hates Israel. <laughs> That's the thing. One time, God has declared judgment on the tribe of Edom. He declared judgment in the book of Obadiah. Obadiah has only one chapter. Now, what is the connection? Because in that passage, God was able to mention about pride. We're talking about pride, one of the causes that hardens our heart. Okay, what did God say to the nation of Edom? Take a look at this. God said to them, You have been deceived by your own pride because you live in rock fortress and make your home high in the mountains. Who can ever reach us way up here? You ask boastfully. God said, But even if you soar as high as eagles, and build your nest among the stars, I will bring you crashing down, says 
the Lord. Take a look at pride being addressed by God. Edom's heart became hard. It became insensitive that they boast. They boast of their fortress. They boast of the place where they live that nobody can attack us. Nobody can reach us up here. No one. But God rebuked them and said, Even if you soar as high as eagle and build your nest among the stars, I will bring you crashing down, says the Lord. You see how God dealt with pride? And what is the result of pride in our lives? Sin and pride, those two are contributors to make our hearts hard. And we can see that sa kay Pharaoh. One of the things that Pharaoh did not allow the children of Israel to let go is because he thinks that he is in control. Pharaoh thinks, because at that time, Egypt was the world power. It was the world power. So Pharaoh, the Pharaoh, the king, the Pharaoh, was thinking, I am the strongest man and the most powerful man in the whole world. So I can take control. Who are you, gods? Who are these gods that will command me to let these Israelites go? That's why we have the illusion of control. Pharaoh was having the illusion that he can control in the people of God, including God. He thinks he was wiser than God. He tried to trick God. These people, the Edomites, tried their best to boast of their strength. But God rebuked them. Pharaoh tried to take control and boast of himself that is the most powerful man, but God rebuked him also. The Lord himself, he said to Edom, will bring you crashing down if you have pride in your hearts. Pride goeth before destruction, Solomon said. If we have that pride in our hearts, God will bring us crashing down. You know, the root of Pharaoh's hard-heartedness was his pride and arrogance. Pride and arrogance. I have money. I have wealth. I have people under me. I am the leader of this great nation. Pride comes into his heart and his arrogance. That was the cause why his heart got even harder. Even in the face of tremendous proof and witnessing. You know what? Pharaoh saw and witnessed the plagues. But in spite of all those tremendous proofs galing sa Panginoon, witnessing God's powerful hand at work, Pharaoh's hand or Pharaoh's heart hardened and the reason that he denied the sovereignty of the one true God. Akala niya, meron na siyang power so he can compete and he can deal with God. God was telling Pharaoh that wanting to have control of everything is an illusion. God is the one who controls everything. Pharaoh was the nation, nation's leader. Another la nation leader in the Bible, one superpower. Do you remember? The nation of Babylon. Their king, Nebuchadnezzar. I mentioned before that one of the plagues was attacking Pharaoh because Pharaoh was considered as a god. King Nebuchadnezzar even put up a statue, right? So that people will worship him or they will worship him as king. So it came into his mind 
that since they worship me, then I have the power. But you know what? When his heart became arrogant and hardened, thinking that he has control of everything, God visited him. Take a look at Daniel 5, 20 to 21. He's talking about Nebuchadnezzar. Look, but when his heart and mind were puffed up with arrogance, he was brought down from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. He was driven from human society. Let me know what did God do to him? He was given the mind of a wild animal. He lived among the wild donkeys. He ate grass like a cow. And he was drenched with the dew of heaven. Take a look. Until he learned that the Most High God rules over the kingdoms of the world and appoints anyone he desires to rule over them. Edom, Nebuchadnezzar, and now Pharaoh. What can you see? Pride and arrogance. If you have pride and arrogance, what does the Bible say? The Lord God himself will bring you crashing down. My next question. Talking about God hardening Pharaoh's heart. My question, why did God allow Pharaoh to harden his heart and then punish him later? Inalaw ng Panginoon ang puso ni Pharaoh na tumigas. Pero bakit ito ginawa ng Panginoon na pinatigas niya ang puso ni Pharaoh and then later on, punish Pharaoh. Di ba? It seems unjust. Right? God was one of those who hardened his heart. And then when Pharaoh's heart hardened, God punished him. Now, I would like to share sa inyo two things. It talks about human and also Biblical. Why did God allow Pharaoh to harden his heart and then punish him later? Now, humanly speaking, it seems wrong for God to harden a person, a person's heart, and then punish the person whose hearts he hardened. Diba? It seems unjust. Totoo naman. Try to take a look at it. Lord, ikaw nga ang nagpatigas ng puso niya. And then since tumigas yung puso niya later on, ipanish mo siya. Humanly speaking, it seems unjust. But you know what? Biblically speaking, let's listen to this. Kasi itong lesson eh. Biblically speaking, however, sa totoo lang, the punishment of Pharaoh was a just thing looking at God. Huh? Ten plagues? A just punishment? Yes. How? Do you know that the Bible tells us that all of us sin? For the, what, is the, what is the punishment for sin? For the wages of sin is death. How many sins I'm going to commit and I'm going to be punished. How many sins do I have to commit in order for me to be sent to hell? Can you answer that? Is it 5,000 sins? Is it 500? The Bible says only one sin will qualify you to win a vacation in hell. One. Isa lang. So when we look at the Bible way, the punishment of Pharaoh, the ten plagues, was a just thing which the Lord did. Okay? Because one sin only, the punishment of that is death. Now, listen. Therefore, 
God's hardening and punishing a person is not unjust. If you experience the punishment of God in your life, and you sometimes say, Lord, you are so unfair. Why did you allow this to me? Why did you allow this? It is very, very, oh, very sakit, painful. Why? You're so unfair. Biblically speaking, it is just and fair punishment. It is just compared to being annihilated by the Lord. Compared to being killed or your life taken away by the Lord. Look at Pharaoh. Look at Pharaoh. God's hardening and punishing a person is not unjust. It is actually merciful in comparison to what the person deserves. Merciful to what the person deserves. Take a look. The Apostle Paul was able to mention what God did. What God did to Pharaoh. Take a look at Romans 9, 17, 18. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I raised you up that I may demonstrate my power in you and that my name be proclaimed in all the earth. So then, God has mercy on whom he chooses to have mercy and he hardens whom he chooses to harden. That is the words of a sovereign God. We cannot question, Lord, why is blah, 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 you gave mercy to him, you gave mercy to her. But for me, it seems I don't have mercy coming from you. Take a look at the verse. Now going back to Pharaoh, the very purpose that God allowed these things to happen, even raising up Pharaoh so that God may demonstrate his power in Pharaoh. How did God demonstrate his power in Pharaoh during the time their stay in Egypt? Ang dami dami. The ten plagues is one. The crossing of the Red Sea is another one. All that sa lifetime ng mga Pharaoh. Ang dami dami na prove ang Diyos through Pharaoh. So through Pharaoh, even though Pharaoh was thinking of a different thing to have control, but God on the other hand, Iba din ang isip ng Panginoon that through that man, through that leader, God is going to demonstrate His power. And that, what else? And that my name be proclaimed in all the earth. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Every time a person reads the happening in Egypt during the time of Pharaoh and the children of Israel, just like what we're doing now, the name of God be proclaimed in all the earth. Ganda, no? Ang dami palang mga bagay na ginawa ang Panginoon. Now, if we look at the Pharaoh, since Pharaoh, Pharaoh 1, Pharaoh 2, Pharaoh 3, uh, there are lots of Pharaohs that they have different names, okay, during their time. But the Pharaoh in question was an evil man. He was an evil man. Here's the thing. He was one of those pharaohs that enslaved Israel for 400 years and ordered Israelite babies to be killed at birth. At birth. He was the one who commanded Israelite babies to be killed at birth. And how many thousands of those babies were killed because of his command? Another thing, the nation he ruled did not oppose his evil actions. Because the Egyptians, even though he was evil, considered him as the personification of their god, Re. So even though he did evil things, his nation did not oppose him. His heart was already hardened towards God's children but God 
harden it more. God's hardening Sparrow's heart was not unjust. And his bringing additional plagues against Egypt was not unjust. The plagues demonstrated God's mercy and grace to Pharaoh and Egypt. What is grace? Grace is something given to you that you don't deserve, right? But grace, on the other hand, is also a thing that is a thing not given to you, but you deserve it. This time, what the thing that Pharaoh deserved, God did not give him. Anong na deserve ni Pharaoh? What did Pharaoh deserve? Pharaoh deserved to be annihilated because of what he did. But the Lord did not give it to him. So it's a thing that you deserve, but it was not given to you. Or the thing that was don't deserve, but it was given to you. That is grace. Both sides. God did just gave Pharaoh plagues. Although how hard, how painful it were those plagues were, still you can see the mercy and grace of God to Pharaoh. Are there any pains or anything that we experience today? That we can see this, that Lord, I am in pain. Aren't you, don't, don't you know that I'm in pain? Don't you know that I am having this problem? Now, when we look at this biblically speaking, we can still say thank you to God. That even though He gave us this pain and this thing in our lives, He did not give us death. He still preserved our life. And this is, we can see in the life of Pharaoh. The plagues were not unjust. The plagues were just a thing that God chose. His being gracious God and being a merciful God. The plagues itself were an instrument by God's full glory, mercy, and grace was put into view. His grace, His mercy, His glory was put into view. And the people of Israel notice it. Take a look. For this very purpose, I have raised you up that I might demonstrate my power in you and that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. What is his name? That he is a gracious God, that he is a merciful God, and that is a he is a glorious God. You know what? Even though God was a merciful God and gracious God, Every plague that comes to Pharaoh is a reminder to Pharaoh to turn over the control to God. I'm showing you my grace. This is not yet the full thing, Pharaoh. Turn over before it's too late. <clears throat> but you know what? Excuse me. Pharaoh's heart continue to get hard. Now, looking at his hard heart, Allow us to question this. What does a hard heart do? Kanina, ang cause to have a hard heart is pride and sin. Now, ano bang mga manifestation ng isang hard heart? Okay? A hard heart does not take God seriously. Years before, alam nyo, nakita kong scenario. I saw the scenario. Moses was talking to Pharaoh. And I do believe Moses noticed Pharaoh's stubbornness. Pharaoh would try to insist his own way. You remember Moses? Moses also insisted his own way. Right? And I remember and I imagine the scenario that Moses talking to Pharaoh, maybe Moses was thinking, Pharaoh, stop it. 
Panginoon yan. Been there, done that. Pero, wala ka magawa dyan. He is Jehovah. He is Jehovah. Years before, Moses had his arguments with the Lord. And later on, what did Moses learn? He'd come to accept that God's purposes cannot be thwarted. You cannot thwart God's purposes. His power cannot be resisted. His promises cannot be broken. Now, it's Pharaoh's turn. It's Pharaoh's turn. They warn Pharaoh of what is going to happen. Moses and Aaron, his brother, they warned Pharaoh. Pharaoh, delicado ang mangyayari. But Pharaoh did not take God seriously. There are three things I will give to you. The first one, Pharaoh thought he could oppose God with his magic. You remember the first, second, and third plague? Even before the plague, when Aaron threw his rod before Pharaoh, that rod became snake. And what did the magicians do? They were able to do it also. Now, come, enter the first plague. Water turned into blood. The whole, they did it also. The second, also they did. Yung mga magicians ni Pharaoh. So, Pharaoh maybe was thinking the first, second, and third plague that he was able to do what Moses and Aaron could do. So, what did he do? He thought he could oppose God with his magic. What does it mean? He tried to compete with the power of God by calling on his magicians. But you know what? There's the thing that happened next. After the third plague, his magicians cannot copy what the Lord did. Hanggang dun lang sila. What did the magicians say? Take a look. They said, this is the finger of God. The magicians claimed to Pharaoh. But Pharaoh's heart remained hard. He would not listen to them. Just as the Lord had predicted. They cannot do the same what God has shown to Pharaoh. You know what? Magicians they were, or maybe they were famous, but God has put a stop with their insult to him. Pinatigil na sila ng Panginoon Siguro ang Panginoon, maybe God was just smiling at what they're doing and what they did. Maybe God was thinking of third plague pa lang. Wala na kayong power, you don't have any power. I still have six left. And I can still have thousands more if I want to. Right? So they exclaimed. They said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh, this is not the work of the man or human being anymore. This is the hand of God. The magicians were sending a message to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, this is God already. We don't have power against him. This is too much. This is too much for us. This is God. This is God. But the Bible says, his heart remained hard. Number two, the first one, he thought that he could oppose God with his magic. Number two, he thought he could outwit God with mere intentions. We can see this, paulit ulit. He thought he could outwit the God who is an all-knowing God. You know, every time na ang plague dumating sa, sa kanila, Pharaoh would say, okay, okay, I will let you go. Okay, you let go. Okay, if you, I, I, I will let you go and then get this, this plague out from my place. Okay. Kung kunin na ng Panginoon, then he would try to take back the Israelites. You know what? 
in the whole scenario of these ten plagues, Pharaoh played with time against God. He made promises to assure God and he tried to strike a bargain with God but for nothing. Alam nyo, if you really look at what Pharaoh did, as if he was just playing with God. When I look at it, allow me to say this, parang inuuto-uto lang ni Pharaoh ang Diyos. But God was so patient. God was so patient with him. Thinking that God, along the way, He will realize what He was doing. Pero wala. But the soon, as soon as the pressure is off, Pero was back to his old ways. Take a look at 8.15 of Exodus. But when Pharaoh saw that relief had come after one plague, he became stubborn. He refused to listen to Moses and Aaron. Again, just as the Lord had predicted. Grabe no? He thought that God either hadn't heard him make those promises. He was thinking na, siguro wa, hindi naman yun na narinig ng Panginoon yung promise ko. Okay? Or maybe God had forgotten what I promised. That's why balik na naman siya. Now, here's a very, very clear manifestation about Pharaoh. He doesn't or doesn't have any idea who Jehovah at all. Wala siyang idea kung sino ang Panginoon. He even tried to trick God. He tried to outwit God. He was thinking of other things na baka hindi ito narinig. Hindi ito nalam or baka na kalimutan na ng Panginoon. Now, you know what? what? What Pharaoh did, how true it is, how true is it in our human nature? Take a look at what the psalmist said. This is what God said. You have done all this and I have said nothing. So you thought that I am like you, God said. But now I reprimand you and make the matter plain to you. Now it's very clear from the word of God. He says, you thought that I am like you? No. God is not like us. God is not uh, like us that he will forget what you have promised and what you have mentioned, what you have vowed. But for Pharaoh, it's different. This is a thing coming from the life of Pharaoh as a lesson that let us not think that God is just like us. God does not forget. God is, what the Bible says, not slack concerning His promises. Kung ano ang na-promise ng Panginoon at ano ang nasabi ng Panginoon, He's going to do it. But Pharaoh was not thinking about it. Right? Now, sometimes we think that God is just like us and that we take Him for granted. We think He's just like other people that when we make promises, we can what? Not fa or not not do what we promised. No. He's not like that. The next one, the third one. He thought he could object to God by being stubborn. He thought that by letting his stubbornness, you know, he thought like by being stubborn, God will give in to him. Or God will not mind him at all. No. As I've said before, kanina, plagues were warning shots to Pharaoh. What else? They are repeated alarm calls for Pharaoh. Pharaoh! No? Every plague was an alarm. Every plague was an, a warning shot. 
But he did not take God and God's instruments seriously. So anong result? Pharaoh's heart was hardened and it even became even harder. He had any number of opportunities to take God seriously, but he failed to do so. Does God give us time? Nakita ba natin sa buhay natin? That God has given us a lot of opportunities to turn to Him. Nagbigay ba ang Panginoon sa atin ng lahat na opportunities as a warning shot, as an alarm call to turn to God, to go back to Him, and to be serious with Him, and not to take Him for granted? Remember, remember, why did I say this to you? It is not only God's enemies whose hearts may be hardened, but also his friends. What does it mean? There are also people in the church whose hearts can be hardened. Diba? Pwede. Hindi lang ito mangyari sa ibang tao na hindi nakakilala sa Panginoon, but also for those na nakakilala sa Panginoon. A gospel or a heart may be gospel hardened, but it can also be sin hardened. Now, what is the result if a person's heart becomes hard? What is the result? Listen, a hardened heart can dull a person's ability to perceive and understand. It will what? Dull a person's ability to perceive and understand. This is what we notice in Pharaoh. If there's one thing that stands out in Pharaoh, he failed to perceive and understand what those plagues were. Right? He failed to understand what's the meaning of those. He failed to understand and perceive what those plagues were trying to say to him. Anyone's heart can harden, even the heart of faithful Christians. You know, in the Bible, even the disciples of Jesus, their hearts were also hardened. So kung nangyari sa disciple ni Jesus, it can also happen to you now, and it can happen to me now, as disciples of Jesus. Our hearts can be hardened. You know what? Your heart as a disciple, and my heart as a disciple, can be hardened, or we can suffer from this malady. I want to give you a passage where the Lord Jesus Christ said, indicating that his disciples were having this hard heart. Okay? Now, the disciples during the time were so concerned about their meager or little supply. Meron silang daladalang tinapay. But since many, many people followed the Lord and wanted to listen to him, the Lord decided to feed them. Sabi nila isa't isa, wala tayong bread. There's no bread left and so far from store or wherever. Since they're thinking about their own selves, maybe the Lord Jesus Christ noticed that they don't have any plan to share their bread to others. But you know what? Here's the thing. Each of them had forgotten how Jesus had just fed thousands with only a few loaves to start. Jesus questioned their hardened, of, their hardened hearts. Why they cannot share to others? Take a look at this passage. Mark 8, 17 to 19. Jesus knew what they were saying. Okay? So he said, Why are you arguing about having no bread? Don't you know or understand even yet? Are your hearts too hard to take it in? You have eyes. Can't you see? You have ears. Can't you hear? Don't you remember anything at all? 
When I fed the 5,000 with five loaves of bread, how many breads of leftovers or baskets of leftovers did you pick up afterward? They said, 12. So, sobra. You know why, why I highlighted those? Because it's true. It's true. The result of a person's heart becomes hard is that a hardened heart can dull a person's ability to perceive and understand. Here's the word. Don't you understand? Are your hearts too hard to take it in? And then what else? Don't you remember? Is it not connected? No? Whose heart became hard? That that heart became dull in hearing and ability in understanding? You know what sabi nga nila? Sa loob ng bahay, kung talaga meron kang gana na makinig, even if it's hard for you to understand, pero meron kang gana, later on you will understand it. It's the same thing sa classroom. Di ba? That's why I, I experienced before. Sabi ko bakit, I, I'm not good in math. Very poor in math. But there are times that our teacher will introduce to us a new lesson in math. Which, if I am present and I'm listening and I've put my heart into it, I understand. But no, not all the time. There are times lang, not all the time. True. When you have a desire or heart to listen to the Word of God and to listen to God, coming here into this place, Lord, make my heart ready and my mind ready to listen to you. Even ganun lang, God will help us to understand. But if our hearts are hard, even ano pang gagawin ng pastor to translate all these texts into Greek or Hebrew and let you give you all the dictionary meaning of those words, and if you have a hard heart, then it's going to be very, very hard to understand. This is what happened to the disciples of the Lord. They were looking at their own selves. That's why they were not able to look what others need. So, a hard heart will result as with our dull of understanding and perception. A hardened heart evidences itself in an inability to see, an inability to understand, an inability to hear, and an inability to remember. A hardened heart fails to see God and His ways. And a hardened heart fails to see others. It always sees only the self. A hardened heart is not suitable in the body of Christ. Mahirap ang hardened heart in the body of Christ or the church because it only sees itself. A hardened heart is not the kind that the disciples of the Lord will be living every day. Sana ipag-pray natin, Lord, mahirap pala yun ang kay Pero. Sana, Lord, bigyan mo ko ng soft and pliable heart to your word and to your dealings in my life. To teach me and to guide me. Have you noticed at the start of the day when our hearts are soft by the word of God and by prayer, o may iba ang buong araw. But if we start the day with a hard heart, everything else crumbles. Everything else crumbles. Lastly, what then is the remedy for a heart condition such as this? What is the remedy for a hard heart? Those people in the Bible like Nebuchadnezzar, like the nation of Edom, and Pharaoh serve as an object lesson for you and for me. Ano ang object lesson? We must recognize the effect that this spiritual malady will bring on us. Try to take a look at their lives. What this spiritual malady brought them. And we can learn from them. Maybe some of us don't detect this malady. 
in our lives. But when we ask God about our heart's condition, He will help us when we seek Him. Minsan hindi natin ma-detect. But here's a suggestion. We can ask God to help us detect if we have this spiritual malady, which is a hard heart. Let us pray this kind of prayer, like the prayer of David. What did he say? Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Isn't this a good prayer? Which I think I would suggest that we will pray before we go out or before we finish this sermon. Lord, help me. Sometimes I think my heart is okay. But why is it that when I deal with others, it seems that it is only myself that I see and I cannot understand them. Na hindi ko sila maintindihan. Na hindi ko makita yung pangangailangan nila. Yung hindi ko maintindihan bakit ako, ako, ako. Ako lang. And why is it, Lord, that I'm not sensitive to your calling? I'm not sensitive to your word. I'm not sensitive to those commands that you have given me. And I'm not sensitive sometimes I promise to you, I don't do. Diba? So why not pray? A prayer like this. Lord, search me and know my heart. Who else can know our heart than the one who made our heart. He is going to tell us through the Holy Spirit that what is needed to be fixed in our hearts. Kung nangangailangan tayo ng tinatawag na spiritual healing, He is going to tell us. He is going to prod us that we need. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Here's the thing I like. Point out anything in me that offends you. So that I will live my life every day glorifying you and not offending you. And Lord, guide me along the path of everlasting life. The first one, remedy, is to ask God to search our hearts. God can soften and heal any heart once we recognize our disobedience and repent of our sins. This is what should have happened to Pharaoh if he repented of his sins and obeyed God. Now, after repenting of our sins and asking God to search our hearts, what's next? Hard hearts begin to be cured when we study God's word. A prayer from the Lord to search our heart. And then what else? Study the word of God to fill our hearts with his word. You know, if we want to live life to the fullest, listen to this. As God intended, we need to study and obey God's written word which not only keeps our heart soft and pure, but allows us to be blessed in whatever we do. Here's the thing that Joshua said, which also will be a reminder to us, talking about God's word. And I will close with this. Sabi ni Joshua to the Israelites, Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. So will, you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. So, ano gagawin natin? 
to pray that God would search our heart and then study, meditate His Word. So it, we, we will have a heart soft and pure which allows us to be blessed in whatever we do. May we put in our hearts the lesson we have learned from God's word today, from Pharaoh, from Edom, from Nebuchadnezzar, and from the disciples. May we put those lessons in our hearts and learn and pray to God and study his word. God bless us all and continue to be safe, everyone. Shall we pray? Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, Lord, truly, sometimes we are guilty of thinking to have control even of our lives as what Pharaoh did, as what Nebuchadnezzar did. Lord, we ask for forgiveness. And today, Lord, even rebuke us of, uh, by even teaching us of the lessons that we learn from their lives. Lord, we thank you for giving us idea how to overcome this hard art in our lives. And the remedy which you have provided in your word <coughs> to pray for you, to allow you to search our hearts, to give you time to give you your way in, in working out in our hearts in pointing out what are the things that is not glorifying today the heavenly father couple it with your word that we are going to study salamat lord for you really care for us and love us as your dear children may starting today that as we go back tomorrow to our respective work and businesses we will pray for you to help us search our hearts and to point us to point to us things that needed to be changed through the Holy Spirit and Lord may the desire of us to study your word even more will be in our hearts until the time you're going to take us to be with you Salamat Lord and may your word will find its rightful place in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.